Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Before we dive in, I want to introduce you to the expert who will be guiding us through these powerful strategies, Brad Stevens. Brad is a purpose-driven entrepreneur and has built global businesses across 18 countries. He is the founder and CEO of Outsource Access, a multi-awarded offshoring business backed by close to 500 employees. Outsource Access has experience connecting 75 industries with virtual teams to help them scale and succeed. He also co-founded a software platform, One-on-One -on -one Connections, which is the only private label connections program for member organizations and conferences across 10 countries and 20,000 plus matches to date. Under his leadership, Outsource Access has received eight national or global awards, including Pace Setters, Inc. Regionals, ranking in the top 7% of fastest growing companies in the U.S. on the Inc. 5000. Ladies and gents, here's Brad Stevens. All right. Well, thanks everybody that's attending today. Uh, look forward to diving into this webinar uh, with everyone. We're gonna keep it a tight, you know, thirty-minute time frame. You know, everybody's time is super valuable. And the whole theme around this this series um, that we're doing is everybody's. When, when it comes to the world of outsourcing and offshoring, you know, we're, we're beyond top of funnel. People know that this whole world exists and that it's out there. Uh, the next question is: Is how does it actually work? And particularly if you're a small to medium business out there, depending on what industry you're in, it's how does this actually work? How does it integrate with my staff? What, what am I going to have them do? Can I trust it? What are they capable of? What about competency? What about accents? All those things. And so uh, we chose to uh, create this series where we dive into that exact how, right? Um, so I'll show a little bit more background about our company, Outsource Access, and, and our guest here. But the, the, the industry we're focusing on now, and we service about 75 different industries, is on health and human services. And the theme around everything when it comes to outsourcing and offshoring, as you'll see, it's about driving growth. It's about driving profitability and efficiency uh, with proven solutions, as we'll share here with some of the, uh, some of the case studies that we'll, that we'll dive into. Uh, and you're Host today, uh, I'll be myself, Brad Stevens, founder and CEO of Outsource Access, I'll share, and uh, Chip Dodd, uh, who's with me, and uh, he is the uh, CEO of Support Services of Virginia in the uh, health and human services space. We'll learn a little bit more about him in, in uh, just a second, uh, but appreciate him being here with us, and uh, you'll understand why he's sitting on the woods, right? It's a big testament of how VA has led him to be in the place that he's in, he's in right now. Um, I'll just share real quickly, anybody who is on the call today, um, I'm gonna, we're going to be covering again, we're going to go... Not, not super deep in 30 minutes, but we're going to cover some of the key points here that probably a lot of you are thinking and asking yourself. Um, if you'll just send an email to tools uh, at outsourceaccess.com and just put help in the subject line, um, we'll send you a whole playbook of health and human services tasks that you can do in all business categories, uh, over 50 different specific functions. Um, so you can read exact details step by step of things that you can outsource uh, in this industry. We'll also send you our top 200 tools to automate and delegate and some of the tools we'll talk about. There's just some great nifty little tech tools that make this really easy when you blend it with VAs and tech tools. And then lastly, this two question exercise template that is really where this whole process can begin. And Chip and I'll talk about that in a second of two simple questions you can ask yourself, ask your staff. They really help tease out where in the world do you begin with outsour outsourcing? What things can you get off people's plate? What things can you tackle uh, that you're not getting to? So just shoot an email to that, tools at outsourceaccess.com, and our team will shoot you a nice uh, kind of email with an organized set of resources here and some other things that will be coming your way. Briefly on my end, I kind of look at myself in four different buckets. Uh, been a lifetime entrepreneur. I'm actually in Atlanta, Georgia, where our office is here in, in, the, in the States, and our whole team is over in the Philippines, um, which I'll talk about. But uh, four buckets, building. So building outsource access uh, as a company. One-on-one uh, -on -one connections is another company we built that we help uh, create one-to-one -one connections for member-based organizations and conferences. You know, the second category I look at is growing. Um, so I'm always growing as an individual. So I'm a part of EO, Entrepreneurs Organization, uh, YPO, and also Real Leaders, uh, where I'm a part of other business-minded individuals that are growing and, and building and part of a monthly forum group that I, that I meet with. And then uh, sharing. Uh, so I do a lot of speaking. Uh, I have a TEDx talk. I have a podcast called Automate and Delegate. Um, and do a lot of writing uh, as well. And the last is giving. Uh, it's a huge part of my life. My wife and I are very involved with uh, Compassion International, and, and we've done some with Outsource Access, help to fund the development of child development centers in different parts of the world. And uh, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals got a chance to speak at the uh, UN headquarters and, um, and made that an integral part of our business, actually, of things that we do to give back related to the community and the environment. And that's my family there. i got two little ones. Uh, for those of you who are in the, in the swing of life with a four-year-old and an eight-year-old now, it's my wife, Cindy. 
So I'll flip it over to Chip Dodds. That's my quick background. Um, again, you read more about all of us, and I'll, I'll share in some resources. But Chip's joining us here today, and he and I have known each other for quite some time. We're both part of EO Entrepreneurs Organization. He saw me speak at a conference, actually, and uh, kind of dove into this world. And uh, and it's crazy. His journey we'll share, but it's grown from one to eight staff doing all different things. But just to give a quick snapshot, Chip, uh, kind of your background in business and what led you here. Yeah, sure. Um, my company is called Support Services of Virginia. It's a family business started in 1994, serving people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. I did my internship there in college back in the uh, mid 90s and then came back to um, basically my mom was fighting cancer. And uh, unfortunately, it got her in 2005. So I've been running it ever since. Um, we're right now grossing. I mean, we've got gross revenues right around 14 million and we're spread across four geographical areas across South Southern Virginia. So, you know, think intellectual disabilities is basically Down syndrome, you know, cerebral palsy is a developmental disability, um, autism, things like that. Like basically we're a community based company that provides supports to people with disabilities. Our primary payer is Medicaid. Um, we also take private pay and we call it funny money. Anytime money comes in, that's not Medicaid. But basically it's a, it's we're, we're a I, I call it a private sector solution to a public sector problem. Uh, we got about 100 and probably, probably 180 W two employees, and then we have the eight um, full time VAs with you out in the Philippines, and um, life is good. And you'll see, yeah, uh, you know, part of Chip's big passion as well as uh, he's got adventure racing, which he's been able to do a lot more of yeah. uh, since since going down the outsourcing route and being able to kind of translate a lot of functions internally, which we'll kind of talk about his journey. So uh, that's why he is living in a van virtually around the country and doing adventure racing um, and gets a chance to kind of live the, live a life of freedom and enjoyment and, uh, and, and leverage the, yeah. the resources that and we're supporting. Like many people that get into outsourcing. Uh, I read that book by Tim Ferriss called the four hour work week. And, you know, it kind of led me to that. Oh my gosh. Like you mean you can automate stuff and, and delegate and, and use a worldwide workforce. And uh, in, in that book, he said he, he like basically does all these amazing things around the world. And I was like, I want to be that guy. <laughs> and, uh, and Brad, when I, when I, I tried to do it without you and, and I couldn't figure it out. And then once I saw your presentation and your team at Outsource Access, that got me over the hurdle. And now I'm a big fan and obviously an advocate for this. And it has led me to, I mean, I literally, I live out of a van probably 130 days a year <laughs> traveling all over, not only the United States, but I do these big expedition races around the world. You know, we've done Expedition Africa three times. The, the last one was eight and a half days long. Just crazy. But I wouldn't have been able to do it. Like my first Expedition Africa was the first time I had a VA. And I got done with the race and I was like, wow, you know, this, this is amazing. How do I do more of this? Well, and we'll talk about here, you know, there's a, it's, there's a business impact, but, but for, for business owners and those of you other business owners as well, it's the lifestyle impact as well. Um, they create the, the freedom and flexibility, which we'll kind of dive into when we get into some of the key impact areas that the chip's going to share with us. And that's what I've asked chip to do is so he's got, he, there's a, and we could spend three hours of how he's integrated this into his business. But I said, chip, let's pick three key areas that have moved the needle the most that we're going to dive into and give you exact specific examples of those three, those three areas. Um, because again, that's the questions everybody has, you know, give me exact ways this can impact my business. And for those of you in the health and human services space, there's some unique elements of things that, that you have um, that you're navigating that, that we're going to try and speak to directly. Directly. Um, and then briefly, just, you know, about outsource access, you know, how did we get to this place? You know, again, our business is all about growth and profitability, you know, just snapshot our business. Um, we got a bunch of highly talented, affordable staff in the, in the Philippines. And we'll talk about, you know, the difference. I mean, the Philippines is still technically a third world nation, but incredibly talented individuals. So you can get highly competent people for very, very affordable, affordable rates, which we'll talk about. Um, we service about 75 different industries in literally every business function, marketing operations, customer service. We're fully incorporated in the Philippines. We hire everybody's full-time employees. We pay their health insurance, their benefits. So we're attracting talent. They want to choose this as a career path. So when they go work for, for people like Chip, they're there and reliable and sustainable. Um, we provide a custom solution for every single client. So we kind of custom understand your needs and, and create a solution for you. And one of the things people love is we document all your processes. The thing every business owner loves to do is wake up and document processes. Well, that's, that's one of the things we actually do is create a whole dedicated playbook. Um, and you get a dedicated account manager with us as well. So in addition to providing the VA, we have an account manager that works with you to understand your business at a deep level so we can strategically support you, honestly, as a consultant, in addition to providing kind of a VA. So it's providing this kind of full turnkey experience. And you know, we've grown to about 500 employees in four and a half years and um, you know, based on primarily on referral because of the, of the the service we've been providing. So that's a quick snapshot of us. And this is actually a picture from our recent holiday party um, in the Philippines. Christmas is huge everywhere, but it's really big. It actually starts in September in the Philippines, interestingly enough. 
Uh, this is our last Christmas party. We had close to all of our 500 folks are able to make it there. Um, just a phenomenal team. And uh, we've had a chance to win eight global or national awards, you know, for the work that we've done with our growth and our impact in our, uh, in our business. Um, and we even have, we actually just released our latest version of our, so we actually, I think we're the only company in the Philippines has our own magazine called Virtual Success Magazine, where we showcase our employees and that's our VA of the year that's on the cover and inside of it, it's about 40 page magazine. We, we cover and share all of our, our staff and their stories. So, you know, it, it's a win-win, right? And again, we'll talk about one of the conceptions is this, you know, sweatshop mindset and it's couldn't be further from that, right? It's a way that people can earn a living that they've ever learned before, um, and create impact and affordability resource for, for people like Chip. And, uh, and the reason the Philippines, and there's a bunch of phenomenal countries you can outsource to, I mean, Latin America, South America, um, you know, different parts of the world. Um, the, the reason I chose the Philippines is, you know, the United States kind of controlled it up until 1947. So it's completely Americanized education system. English is our second language, very hardworking, disciplined individuals, you know, and they're graduating about 800,000 four-year college degree individuals per year, right? Um, so perception a lot of people have, um, you know, is very wrong in, in terms of competency and ability, but that's particularly when, with English and there not being a culture gap. And when you're working like Chip is and his team working side by side with these staff in the Philippines, um, there's not that culture gap because, you know, they understand about Taylor Swift just as well as Americans do, right? Or, or Outback Steakhouse, which actually there was one when I was there last time. So um, you don't have that bridge that you do with, um, you know, with some other countries sometimes. And before we jump in those three top things with, with Chip, I just want to right up front deal with what I call the DFCs, the top doubt, fears, and concerns that everybody has. There's others, but I just want to hit these right up front because, you know, if you had these lingering in your mind going into it, so let's just go and address them. First of all, it's just competency, right? Again, a lot of people, when they think of offshoring and outsourcing, they think of accent. They think of that bad customer service call they have with their cable company, right? It's a, it's a whole wrong framework, right? Um, as you'll learn, I've, and I've learned, um, I mean, my very first virtual assistant I work with in the Philippines, you know, was able to grow and serve as our COO over 500 people. Um, you know, the, the stuff and competency of what we're doing is, is tremendous. These people are smart. They're quick learners. Um, they, they rapidly kind of grasp and understand things. Um, and they're hunger, uh, hunger, desire, and learn and to, and to grow, you know, time zones, you know, the Philippines relative to where you are in the world, I mean, in the U S it's kind of, it's kind of like the 12 hours off, but the great thing is, and I'll talk about some of the communication tools is it's kind of like you can work 24 seven, right? They're getting things done while you're sleeping and vice versa. But I'd say the majority of what we've seen with clients, they kind of work these hybrid hours where if they need to have some live chat with their, with their staff or their VA, they kind of do it in the morning while it's their evening. Um, and then, you know, each is kind of working while the other is, is sleeping. Now there are staff that absolutely will work your local hours. And if you need that and want that, they absolutely will work American hours, um, but it's been less of an issue than most people kind of think. Uh, data security, right? And I could dive into this in a bunch of different ways. The thing is, there is an answer around it. Um, you know, Chip will share everything from providing your own laptops if you want to that are that are that are encrypted um, to whether you use a virtual um, VPN platform like VMware or others. But this is a very custom thing. Each client has different data security needs, and so it's about creating the right solution that's a fit for them. And, you know, the other question people have is the sweatshop situation, right? Are these people have making the right kind of income and living? And as you saw in the magazine that I shared and otherwise, um, it's certainly not the case. I mean, our VA staff that are working with us are, are making as much as other professionals, um, you know, sitting alongside, whether it's pharmacists or, you know, any other professionals that are that are in the in the industry are making more. And they're able to work from home, be with their families. Um, so certainly not that situation at all. And last thing is communication and documenting processes. Um, this is when everything everybody asks, how do I get stuff out of my brain? How do I communicate with these individuals? What about getting things documented? What are the tools, the resources? Now, some clients have certain ways they do it. Chip's got a certain set of tools and things that he uses, um, but there's tools that we'll share with you. Uh, one of them is called Screencast-O-Matic. Um, it's actually been called now, it's, they changed their name to ScreenPal. Um, but I'll just share one quick example here. It's basically that you record your screen, your voice, and your mouse, right? So if you've got something you want to communicate about how to do a certain process, you can record it, saves the link, send it over to them, they can watch the video. And that becomes the basis, actually, of how we help document processes. Um, so this is a quick example I'll share with you. So I was going to communicate to my team a change that I wanted on our website, right? So I click a button on ScreenPal, pops it up, start recording, and you'll see the video here. I'll make sure that my uh, audio is... Uh, I should be sharing there, but if not, you can at least see the, uh, see the visual here, pop it back. So you can see there, it puts a yellow circle around the mouse. It follows it.
And so I had this idea that I wanted to have this JD Powered Associates type of award on our website. So I pulled it up on my computer, recorded the screen, showed them what I wanted, and sent it over. So just share a quick example. That's kind of how it works. It makes it super simple to unpack things and get it over. Um, and you save it, record a link. So I'd encourage you to go to screenpal.com, go to loom.com. You can see those tools, very key for documenting processes. And then they get put into a documented playbook. And so this is something we do at Outsource Access for every single client is we document every single process and then put a granular 10, 12, 15, 20 step process of exactly how to do that particular function. So for example, this is, an, this is one, one of you know, hundreds in the healthcare space is tracking resident doctor's attendance, right? So this is a specific specific task that needed to be done. Our staff in the Philippines is handling it for this client. Um, and these are the 12 step process of exactly how to do that. And if there's a screencast recording that's needed to show how to go into a system and do it, you'll put a little link to the screencast recording. So it can be a blend of written content as well as screencast recordings to show how to do a process. So documentation and your process is a part of what these staff will do for you, right? And for companies that haven't, <laughs> haven't documented any of their processes, which most of them hadn't, um, it's actually a, a two for one that you get. You get incredible, affordable talent to plug into your business and you get your processes documented as part of it. Uh, so that's kind of a, just a quick on a few of the doubt, fears, concerns people have um, that I kind of address quickly up, up front. So we're gonna dive in now with Chip and specific examples. So I'll just share a very high level. Okay, very cool. This is this is Chip's uh, majority, I think, of, of his team. This was captured a, a little earlier ago, but um, you know, a lot of his key team members at Support Services of Virginia, right? His C-suite, his key staff and admins. And this is um, actually just part of, he now has eight. Th these are six of the eight virtual assistants that support his entire organization across marketing, operations, HR admin, bookkeeping, sales, customer service, um, and a variety of things that we'll kind of we'll kind of dive into. So, you know, this little visual I love because it shows it's not about, you know, replacing, it's about integrating, right? So he's taking his staff in Virginia. They've never fired a single employee to replace them with ABA, right? Um, it's about integrating them with their staff and so that they can focus on their highest and best use and have these staff supporting them. So it becomes kind of this one plus one equals four type of experience, which we'll dive into. So just want to show that quick visual of, of, uh, of Chip and his team and kind of how to blend together. And with that, we'll jump into the number one thing that he shared. So again, there's a number of impact elements that, that this has had on Chip's business, but uh, we chose three that he felt was best to share with this group. And the number one thing was C-suite dedicated support. So Chip, I'll let you unpack that and we'll uh, kind of fill in the blanks. Yeah, like I said, I started off with the four-hour work week. And uh, when I when I ran by uh, my office, the, the thought of getting VAs to help support us, um, they had all of the, the, like you said, the fears and the concerns and all of that. And I, you know, I, I have a couple of different companies. And so I was like, well, hell with it. I'm just going to get my own VA with my other company that I, I don't have to answer to anybody. And um, so I, I ended up with Kathleen and back in 2019. And then uh, as she started helping me out, people in my company would, they'd have a problem or something. I was like, Hey, if you want, I can have Kathleen do that. And they're like, who's Kathleen. And then before you know it, you know, she's, you know, running circles around uh, some of the, the, the people in the office. And then before you know it, they get one Kathleen, now they want another and another and another. And it's like, whoa, this is amazing. So it, it really went through a cultural shift in the organization. I know, Brad, you mentioned this in your presentation. I totally didn't believe you. I would have called BS. But all of a sudden, it went from like this, these concerns and all of that to where VAs are now the default. That's like the if there's stuff that needs to be done, like, can we get a VA to do that? And um, it's just it's it's just a they've been so good from being a, a, an employee competent. They they're on time every time. There's no, no, almost no turnover. One lady left us to go get her daughter. She wanted to go to medical school. Like, mm -hmm. please leave me and go to medical school, like better your life. So but we've never had turnover because of like poor performance. Um, so it, but based, uh, whether it be the community services boards that are like our referral source or our customers that receive services, I want them to take all of the tedious stuff that is not the highest and best use of their time and delegate it out either to somebody in the States or their VA. And so now we've gone to that culture that if, if, if they are not doing something that justifies their pay, then they need to get delegated out. And at this point, yeah. it's almost like a joke. If they catch me doing something dumb, like, Chip, why don't you have a VA do that? That's dumb. It's, it's completely changed the culture in our company. And it's really helped our retention of our upper level executives. Yeah, that's one of the things that Chip shared with me that actually I have in, I have in our sales presentation now is that, you know, said, so Brad, you know, one of the things that surprised me is, is how much impact this has had on retaining my W-2 employees. Ironically, by outsourcing, I'm able to retain more of my W-2 employees. And in a, in a time where we're in a talent war out there, um, you know, his staff, 
right? They can't go work for anybody else in the, in this space and get a dedicated support person from the Philippines because most other business owners don't have the foresight to do that, right? So it's ended up becoming a retention tool that, you know, because they have this resource working for Chip, you know, they're not going anywhere, right? So it ends up becoming an interesting support function uh, and retention tool with this with the C-suite team. And, and as, you know, Chip and Chip, you blinked out there for a second um, with the, uh, the self oh, Sorry about that. Um, but the, I think what he was about to talk about was that he started with one himself, right? And then once they kind of saw what they were doing with Chip, he kind of proved it. And they're like, hey, well, maybe I want to try one of those. And then maybe I want to try one of those. And then before you know it, he ended up providing staff supporting all of his different C-suites in, in all their departments. And at the end of the day, the impact it has is not only does it do retention, but they love their job more, right? They get to wake up and do the things that they love doing every day and can delegate the rest out. So there, it's a high quality of life, better culture for his staff and C-suite, and it helps retain them as well. So again, it's about one plus one equals four. You take a high performing, you know, seventy, eighty thousand dollar, you know, executive, hundred thousand dollar executive. You pair them with a VA. You get things off their plate. They're performing higher dollar value activities, and they're also, um, you know, happier, you know, kind of along the way. So that was kind of the number one, and that'll tie into some of the others that we'll talk about. So uh, being able to bring that in, and depending on the size of your organization, if it's just you, maybe you don't have a full suite, or you just have a couple of key managers. But at the end of the day, you bring in one VA, and maybe that one VA can support a couple of managers, and you step into it. It's about getting those people to their highest and best use. Yep. Second big area uh, we talked about, and this is very tactical in, in, uh, in chips industry, is Medicaid audits both on the staff side, in the HR and training, uh, as well as on the, on the client side. But in his industry, in, in uh, Chip's industry, he's getting that set up, um, you know, providing, uh, you know, care to, to individuals. Um, I mean, Medicare, Medicaid is who they bill a lot for the services that they're providing, right? But in order to do so, they got to be sort of compliant um, in making sure that both their employees are trained and, and, and ongoing training and compliant for training. And also uh, on the client side, right, that they have adequate justification to be able to bill, um, uh, to bill their, their clients. And so... When Chip and I were talking and wait for him to kind of pop back on, you know, this is one of the biggest things he has his staff, his, his VA staff do is, is constantly stay on top of looking at all of his employees and looking at all of their compliance of their training to making sure that they are staying up to speed on all of the HR components of, of training they need to do, whether it's, it's, uh, you know, medical related training or uh, documentation related training. Um, and so and it's semi real time, right? So they're checking every single day and checking and making sure that they're being um, they're being compliant with all of their training and reminding them of hey, you have upcoming training that you need to do to stay current with your current certifications. And on the flip side, it's about on the customer side is that whenever they have to do work for for a client uh, and one of their patients that they're that they're working with. If they don't have the adequate documentation, so they'll have one of their staff, one of their nurses that go out and does work. You know, they work with one of their, you know, with their um, you know, patients. And if that isn't documented appropriately, whenever Medicaid comes in and they do an audit, right? If they go check and find that you didn't have the pro proper documentation for the billing, or if your staff did not weren't current on all their training, they can require you to give them the money back that they gave you, right? To the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars um, in some cases. And so by having his VAs monitor and stay on top of this, he's able to, every single day, they're watching and making sure that all their staff are being trained, they're following up, they're making sure they're being compliant. And then also they're checking in on the um, uh, on the Thera app, which is a, a electronic uh, records tool that they use to make sure that things are being documented there as well. So, and I think he was sharing with me when they would have Medicaid audits in the past, because this wasn't being done and, and their VA staff weren't kind of monitoring this and micromanaging it, to be honest, um, they'd get hit with a hundred, hundred fifty thousand dollar Medicaid uh, impact because they can go back 18 months and find out where there's any gaps, right? That's now dropped to less than $10,000, right? Now it's all relative to what your revenue is. So they're about a $14 million, you know, business, right? So 10,000 still sounds like a lot, but relative to 150 to $160,000 that they were dealing with before, uh, very, very different, uh, level of, uh, of impact there. But yeah, this is a, a huge element. And again, this is, you may not have Medicaid audits in your specific business and in, in, in healthcare. Um, but if you got anything similar, right, that just involves monitoring and looking at data, keeping data up to date, keeping it current, being managed and monitored, because your existing employees, like his existing employees locally didn't have the time to kind of keep on track of all this stuff, right? So the VAs were able to, um, to help take care of it. Uh, the third big impact area um, is just overall reduction in his administrative footprint while still driving the top line. And so Chip alluded to this a little bit earlier when we were um, when we were chatting, is 
at the end of the day, he back in 2019, he had about 12 to 15 C-suite staff on on um, you know on site at his offices, right? And then post COVID was able to reduce that down. He's only got about three or four people that are on site, right? Part of that is because his C-suite, who's still there, right, are now able to work virtually because their virtual staff that they're overseeing, all right, and they're working with for the most part are in the Philippines, right? So they there's not as much need for a physical office footprint because a C-suite can work virtually because they're working with a lot of their virtual staff, right? And then administratively, a lot of the other functions, and as I said, never kind of terminated or fired an employee, an employee at all. Um, but if someone did quit, you know, in their business before they would, you know, go to hire someone, um, it would be exploring, Hey, could we replace this with a, with a VA potentially? Um, there you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. It was like, everything was perfect. And then it, it wasn't. So who knows? Oh, no worries. Well, I've been stepping in for you and kind of in the meantime, yeah, good. um, but kind of went through number two there, uh, as far as the Medicaid audits and was sharing uh, the detail behind what you and I discussed around that, uh, and the impact that it's had on, you know, financially going from 150, $160,000 impacts down to less than 10, you know, it's all relative to revenue, which I was sharing with them, but, but having staff kind of quasi real time, sort of keeping track of that, both on staffing, um, you know, certifications and keeping up certifications and making sure the adequate billing documentation was being done on the client side translates that when you do get audited by Medicaid. Right. You got your ducks in a row and they're not finding a bunch of issues that they're going to you know, kick back and want you to give them a bunch of money <laughs> in return. Absolutely. So. And I think you mentioned that on the two questions that you when you facilitate a discussion with a, with a client going through, basically, what are the things that you should be doing that you're not? And that really resonated with me because it our staff just do not like to audit records. And, you know, here you are, the head of, head of HR, and they've got all of these things. They're trying to onboard people. Meanwhile, you got to stop what you're doing and go and like take a snapshot of a handful of records to do this audit. It's just tedious work, and they don't like to do it. And it takes a lot of concentration. You can't be uh, interrupted. So we hired VAs specifically to scrub our training records, our HR records, and our customer documentation that supports our medical billing. And that's their main role. This is not the side thing that they do when they – have extra time. This is, we hired you for this to do. And so now it's like our records are being audited on a very frequent basis. They catch things really early and it has significantly decreased the amount that we have payback whenever Medicaid comes and audits us. Um, and it's like, I sleep at night before it was like, every time <laughs> Medicaid came in, I had no idea if my company's going out of business because if we had a hundred thousand dollar payback, I may not have been able to afford that or we're, we're financing it. Now it's like, Oh my God, Medicaid comes. I don't care. I know the records are up to date. It's like I it, it literally yeah. my anxiety does not peak at all. And that was a big change that did not happen before we had VAs. And those of you listening, right? It depends on, you know, in your business, you have those things that keep you up at night, right? Are things being kept up and data? And honestly, just it kind of falls in this bucket, you know, this this two question exercise of, you know, what are things that you're doing you want to get off of your plate? But then the other is what are things that, 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 that should be getting done that you're not getting to due to time, money, or knowledge constraints, right? And that was one of those for Chip in this is that, look, I wish we were auditing at a more regular basis, but I don't have the dollars and time to do it. You know, income VAs, affordable offshore resource, now you're able to do that thing that you've been wanting to do but weren't able to get to in the past and obviously translate into a massive financial, you know, kind of impact and, and better sleep, obviously. Um, yes. All right, well, let me jump uh, in terms of timing here. I know we're a little over because we had the, the intermittent, but um, – Jump to impact number three, and I went ahead and, and talked about this briefly with everyone. Is just overall how you went from twelve to fifteen people, you know, in a physical office pre-COVID, down to you know three because your C-suite can now work virtual and remote because they're working primarily with virtual assistants and offshore, so they need to be in the office. And then you didn't really fire anybody, but if there were people that did quit or moved on before you quit and hired again, um, it's like, hey, could a VA do this? And before you knew it, you know, a lot of our VA staff, and that's I think how you grew to eight. We're able to absorb a lot of administrative and operational functions. So now you got less need of a physical plant, lower rent in terms of physical location. Um, yep. But then overall, just total number of people has been reduced. And you've been able to grow by $3 million, right? So grew yep. top line by $3 million and have not increased your admin costs, not a dime. Uh, and in fact, it's kind no. of gone down a it's bit. It's gone down. <laughs> right. It's gone down. And, and the other thing, j just like it was a cultural shift uh, moving from no VAs to some VAs, it was a cultural shift going... I need to be in the office. I need to be around my coworkers to we're now the default is virtual. And the VAs really helped us that we had VAs before COVID. We were using Zoom before COVID. Thanks to EO, you know, we use it to manage our organizations. But it's still we had that 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 feel that we've got to be in the office. Maybe maybe I got there a little late and I left a little early and did some of my job at home. The minute COVID hit, it was like we just turned the light switch off. It was like, we're OK, we're 100 percent remote. No problem. We're already dealing with VAs remotely. 
we, we, we have a remote culture at this point. So COVID really had no impact. And we actually, it was really neat. We shut down my corporate office and we used that space for customer space because we have a day support that supports people with disabilities. And obviously with the, uh, the social distancing, we needed more space for less people. We were able to shut down the corporate office, use that space for customer space. And it, it really saved the day when we were able to open our program. But even now, COVID's long gone. Everybody's around going to concerts again, yada, yada. We're not going back. Um, we've been able to leverage technology, leverage our VAs to do meetings together. I mean, they are a legitimate part of my team. It's not like they're just an assistant. They they answer on the phones. They, they do the same thing my team does. It just doesn't matter where you are in the world as long as you have good internet, which obviously today <laughs> mine was splotchy. But either way, that we we it, it has completely changed the culture in our company, and um and it's really really helped us be more efficient and be able to scale up. I know a lot of what you're talking about is scaling. This allows your company to scale without thinking. I need another office. I need to hire more people in the states with benefits and all this stuff. Um, yeah, VAs have really allowed us to do that. So it becomes a whole shift in the culture, as he's saying, right? So you know, for any of you that have explored this and having those doubt, fears, and concern, is how does it work? And it kind of feels really arm's length. Why don't you just kind of take the journey and begin the process? And, uh, you know, we, we're happy to help you with that journey, which I'll share in a second. Um, it can really, really snowball and become just a part. And, and now I wouldn't imagine doing anything different. Like that one-on-one -on -one connections program that, that you saw us shared. I mean, that's a software program we launched. We're doing 40 organizations throughout the world. We launched that in two weeks for less than $500. And now we're doing 40 organizations with 20,000 connections um, that, that we'll be able to bring to life because of knowing how to use, you know, some affordable offshore staff that are talented and come up with a win-win. So, well, guys, that wraps up kind of our top three things. I was, thanks for Chip for sharing. And uh, again, uh, if you'll shoot an email, um, oh, and I want to share this too. This is what I shared at the meeting. But you know, okay. the personal impact, obviously, which we already kind of talked about at this point, is you know it's translated into Chip being able to the flexibility, you know, to travel the world. You know, he hasn't had to be in an office in, since 2019 and can virtually manage yep. remote. You know, uh, in a van down by the river. You know, as everybody jokes around with yep, him on, literally. Um, quite literally as he's, as he's sharing, but it's, it's, it's massive, the lifestyle impact. And I could share tons of stories of other clients that, you know, from an owner and their managers as well, it's changed their life and, and how they're going about doing things and being able to step into hobbies and interests that they never thought. And now Kathleen, his VA, instead of doing, you know, admin work for him, for the company, she edits his YouTube videos for all of his adventure, <laughs> all of his adventure racing and, and blogging. So, um, yeah. So and, and another plug real quick. I know you mentioned this a little bit earlier, but, you know, Kathleen's also living her best life. Uh, when I met her, she wasn't married, didn't have any kids. Now she's married. She's actually on maternity leave right now. And her playbook was so good. And this was not because of me. I just did the screen recording like you taught me to. She built the playbook. Her supervisor helped her. And now I have a gentleman named Kim that took over for Kathleen. He took over where she left off. And about the only bug fixes I had was getting his access set up to different things. But her playbook was so good. He just sat in the role and started pushing out content that I needed right away with no in input from me. And so how many people on this call or on this webinar think that if one of your key employees leaves, another employee could sit down in their spot, read the playbook and do their job with no supervisor, no instruction? Probably not often. Um, so I got to give it to Brad, you and your team and this concept of the playbook. Um, that has also changed our culture quite a bit so that all of our employees, if they take a vacation, they can enjoy their life and have a personal life. Somebody else can step in and do their job. That's helped a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's, and it's kind of one of those things that, you know, you, nobody wants to do. And a lot of people discovered during COVID and everybody had to go work remote. They realized how they didn't have anything documented. And so interestingly, I can't imagine doing this business without doing playbooks, but it becomes one of the biggest values our clients have said is Brad. I mean, our VA and all that is amazing that they're doing, but one of the biggest values as well is, you know, you've now documented all of our processes for us. You know, there's companies that charge 10, 15, 20 grand just to do that. Right. And it's just a part yeah. of kind of what we, we do in our process. So, um, so yeah, so on that note, um, you know, just remind everybody that's on here, you know, send an email to tools at outsourceaccess.com, uh, put health in the subject line and, uh, and we'll send y'all a great set of resources, particularly in the health and human services space. We'll send you a whole playbook with over 50 specific tasks with detailed. So you can kind of see more examples of the types of things that we're doing. Um, a whole set of automation and delegation tools like Loom and, and uh, screencasting. Um, and then we'll send you a template to do that two question exercise. And I can't encourage you more to do that with your team. Take those two simple questions. We'll send you to you in the Google Doc how it works. Copy and paste. Send it to them and say, hey, we're going to meet in a week. I want you to make a list of all the things that, things that you're doing. You don't think are the best use of your time and how many hours per, per month are you doing it. And then secondly, from where you sit in the business, what are things that we should be doing that, that we're not, right, due to time, money, and knowledge constraints? 
you know, and Chip and I were talking, I can't tell you how many businesses I've, I've asked to do this. And their staff who've, who've been working with them for seven years will come back with 47 things. And the owner's like, Jane, you've been with me for seven years. Why, did, why, why didn't you tell me? Well, well, you never really asked me, right? So if you never outsource a thing, this simple exercise is a great way to kind of unpack inefficiencies that may exist. And it creates a roadmap for things that you can automate and delegate, you know, with these resources. Um, and so everybody that's on the list here today or on the, uh, on the, on the webinar, um, you know, at Outsource Access, we have this whole custom discovery matching process that we do, where we do a deep dive, figure out all your constraint points and your challenges. Um, and so uh, for any of you that are on the call and interested in just kind of exploring that journey, um, you can uh, just go to outsourceaccess.com uh, forward slash process. And there, there's a video explaining how our whole process works. Um, and you can either book a call with one of our team members to kind of explore more about your business before you get down the path. Or if you want, um, you can click the link and it's fully refundable. So no risk. If you want to just begin the process, begin the discovery with us, help us unpack your constraints and challenges, um, you can uh, purchase that. And if you use discount code D200 uh, in that link, um, and I posted the link in the chat as well, uh, it'll take $200 off. So it takes it down from $495 down to $295. And again, fully refundable. And literally no questions asked. We get down the road. You have something else come up, other issues, or you, you know, we're not finding the right fit, whatever. We're happy to fully refund it. Um, and we were able to offer that because we, it rarely ever happens with us because we you know, deliver. But uh, it's a risk-free way to begin the journey. Or like I said, if you want, uh, you can click and book a call. And I'll post that in the chat as well. Um, on our website, you can book a call with, uh, with one of our staff that can ask more questions about your business, figure out your constraints and challenges, and, uh, and get some more clarity before you begin the discovery matching process. But we get amazing feedback on this discovery and matching process that helps get clarity about where people's constraints are and exactly how they could actually use outsourcing you know, in, their, in their business. But again, if you want to book a call, I posted the link in the chat as well. You can book a call with, uh, with one of our staff to kind of get a little more clarity um, through that way as well. So well, thanks everybody for attending here. Um, I know I mentioned questions, but I know we're kind of over over time and want to give your your time back. I know we're about 10 minutes over uh, with a few little intermittent blips, but um, but hopefully this was super valuable for everybody to give you exactly more detail around the how, right? Uh, you know, Medicaid audits for staff and clients, right? That's a very specific example that maybe you never even thought of or something similar like that kind of function in your business. Um, that you can leverage these these resources. Uh, but it's about really looking at all your entire business and figuring out where the low-hanging fruit is, beginning there, and then kind of unpacking it. And before you know it, like Chip, you know, he's got seven or eight now, and it's changed the entire kind of architecture of, of his business. And as we've seen in the 75 different industries that we service, you know, kind of otherwise. Uh, so thanks, Chip, for being here. I uh, appreciate it. And yeah, My uh, pleasure. Actually, Chip's asked me to come up. I'm going to speak for a healthcare conference up with um, – uh, with him in a couple of weeks here up in Virginia. So look forward to, to seeing you up there. So, well, thanks everybody yeah. for your time. Good. Huge thanks to the outsource access team. We have a phenomenal kind of marketing team that helps put this together and promote it and, and advocate as we're, we're just getting this new series underway. Um, this is only our second one, but we're gonna be doing these every single month for every different industry vertical that we service. Everything from janitorial supply companies to personal injury law firms to roofing companies, I think is actually up next. Or we're bringing people in and doing a deep dive of how does this actually work in my business and give you specific examples and details uh, to support you. So we'd love to be a, a growth partner and uh, help redefine how you scale. Uh, thanks, everybody, for your time, for being here. And I look forward to maybe speaking with you soon. Take care.